bridge of the starward bound hummed with quiet efficiency as stars streaked past the viewports. Captain James Carter leaned forward in his chair, eyes scanning the myriad of data screens before him. Anything on the long-range scanners, Ensign? Carter's voice broke the routine hum, directed at a young officer stationed at a console filled with scrolling data. Nothing yet, Captain. All quiet. Wait, hold on. The Ensign paused, his brow furrowing. I'm picking up something unusual. It's a distress signal, but it's not like any I've seen before. Carter stood, interest peaked. On screen, let's see what we're dealing with. The main display flickered, then stabilized to show a complex series of symbols and audio waveforms, clearly alien. Can we decode it? he asked. Lieutenant Zhao, the communications officer, adjusted her headset, focusing intently. Working on it now, sir. It's a tough one. Seems to be a blend of encrypted audio and visual data. Minutes ticked by, the tension rising palpably on the bridge. Finally, Zhao nodded. Got it. It's a call for help. A plea. They're trapped and in immediate danger. Whoever they are, they don't have much time. Carter rubbed his chin, mulling over his next move. His second-in-command, Commander Davis, approached with a cautious tone. It could be a trap, James. We're far from the nearest Star Command base. Going in blind isn't wise. Turning to face Davis, Carter's eyes had a spark of determination. Or it's someone in real trouble. We have protocols, yes, but we also have a duty to help where we can. Prep the ship for a detour. Let's at least check it out. As the crew set to work, Carter walked over to the navigation desk. Ensign Miles, plot a course to the signal's origin. Let's make it quick. Yes, sir, Ensign Miles replied, her hands flying over the holographic display to change their trajectory. The starward bound veered off its charted course, heading towards the unknown. Carter watched the stars change as they approached the signal's coordinates, deep in thought about the potential dangers they faced. Signal's getting stronger, Captain, Zhao announced. It's coming from an asteroid belt surrounding a dead planet. Not exactly welcoming. Keep shields up and sensors on high alert, Carter instructed. He turned to address his bridge crew. Stay sharp, everyone. We don't know what's out there, but remember, we're here to help. Let's find them and figure out our next move. As the ship edged closer to the asteroid field, a sense of foreboding filled the air, but Carter's resolve never wavered. He knew the risks, but the call for help had been clear. No matter who or what sent it, they couldn't turn away, not when someone's life might be hanging in the balance. This was what it meant to explore the stars, to brave the unknown and face whatever dangers lay out there. Contact in five minutes, Captain, Miles reported. Carter nodded, gripping the arms of his chair. All hands, prepare for potential hostilities. We're going in. The crew braced themselves as the ship approached the source of the signal. Whatever awaited them in the depths of space, Captain James Carter was ready to face it head on. The starward bound maneuvered cautiously through the dense asteroid field that surrounded the dead planet, its hull occasionally pinging as small rocks glanced off the shields. The bridge was bathed in red light, signaling the high alert status. Steady as she goes, Ensign Miles. Keep us on this bearing, Captain Carter directed, his eyes never leaving the main viewport. Captain, the signal's epicenter is less than a kilometer ahead, reported Lieutenant Zhao, her voice tense. But there's something odd about the asteroid configuration ahead. It doesn't look natural. Commander Davis leaned over the tactical display, his expression darkening. Could be a trap. I suggest we launch probes to get a better look before we go any further. Carter nodded. Do it. Launch the probes, but keep us moving forward, slowly. As the probes darted ahead, the crew watched the live feed displayed on the main screen. The images returned showed a series of large asteroids positioned in a nearly symmetrical pattern. That's not a natural formation, Carter mused aloud. It's almost like a barricade. Suddenly, the ship rocked violently, throwing several crew members off balance. Shields at 80%, shouted Ensign Miles, gripping her console. We're under attack. Source, Carter barked, regaining his footing. Multiple energy blasts coming from the asteroids, Davis responded, his eyes scanning the readouts. They've got concealed turrets. Carter's jaw tightened. Return fire, target those turrets, and get us some maneuvering room. The ship lurched forward as the helmsman complied, weaving through the deadly maze. Meanwhile, the Starward Bound's own weapons systems came alive, sending precise return volleys toward the hidden enemy emplacements. Amid the chaos, a communication channel opened, the screen flickering to life to reveal a rugged-looking alien with a scarred face. 
Human vessel, you have strayed too far, the alien sneered in broken human language. Turn back now, or be destroyed. Carter stepped forward, his gaze fixed on the alien. We received a distress signal from this location. We are here to provide assistance, not to engage in hostilities. The alien laughed, a harsh, grating sound. Foolish humans, there is no one here to save. Only death awaits you. Before Carter could reply, the screen went blank, and the ship shuddered as another volley of blasts struck them. Damage report, Carter called out. Shields down to 50%, minor hull damage, reported Zhao. But we've taken out half of their turrets. Carter nodded. Keep up the fire. Davis, prepare a boarding party. If they won't talk, we'll get our answers directly. Davis nodded, moving to rally a team of security personnel. As he left the bridge, Carter turned to the rest of his crew, his voice firm. We're not leaving until we find out what's going on here. Keep pushing forward and stay alert. As the last of the enemy turrets was silenced, the starward bound cautiously approached the largest asteroid. The boarding party, suited up for combat, stood ready at the airlock. Whatever happens, we're in this together, Carter said, clapping Davis on the shoulder before joining him at the airlock. Let's find out who really sent that distress signal. With a determined look shared between them, the airlock doors hissed open, and the team stepped out into the unknown, ready to face whatever dangers lay hidden in the shadows of the asteroid. The airlock door sealed with a hiss behind Captain Carter and his boarding team as they entered the hollowed interior of the largest asteroid. The corridors were dimly lit, casting long shadows that stretched eerily into the distance. Keep your eyes peeled, Carter instructed, his voice low. This place could be crawling with mercenaries. The team advanced slowly, their boots echoing softly on the metal floor. Commander Davis, leading the way with a handheld scanner, paused at a junction. Heat signatures ahead, but they're faint. Could be our target or a trap. Carter nodded, signaling the team to prepare for engagement. Let's take it slow. Zhao, keep trying to hail them. Maybe they'll respond now that we've neutralized the threat. Zhao nodded, her fingers moving quickly over her portable communicator. No response yet, Captain. It's like they're deliberately ignoring us. As they moved deeper into the asteroid, the corridor opened into a large chamber filled with electronic equipment and surveillance monitors a command center. Standing before them, caught by surprise, was a small group of armed mercenaries. Before they could react, Carter raised his weapon. Drop your weapons, you're outnumbered, he called out firmly. The mercenaries hesitated, then complied, laying down their arms. Carter stepped forward, his gaze fixed on the apparent leader, a tall figure with a scar across one cheek. I'm Captain James Carter of the Starward Bound. We received a distress signal from this location. Start talking. The leader, a rugged humanoid with thick skin that shimmered slightly under the lights, scoffed but then sighed. You're in over your heads, humans. Yes, we sent the signal, but not for the reasons you think. Carter's expression hardened. Explain. The mercenary leader shifted uncomfortably. It was a ruse to lure you here. My employer wanted to capture your ship, but your arrival, let's just say it's disrupted more than just your mission. And the real sender of the distress signal? Davis interjected his tone skeptical. The leader glanced at his companions, then back at Carter. The queen of the Zaltrax. She's real, and she's here. We were hired to keep her isolated and silent. She's a political prisoner, exiled from her own kind because she advocated for peace with other species. Carter relaxed his stance slightly, intrigued. Take us to her. Now. Reluctantly, the mercenaries led the human team through a series of winding corridors to a heavily fortified cell. Inside, they found a regal alien woman with luminous eyes and an aura of dignity, even in captivity. She rose as they entered, her voice resonant and calm. Captain, I am Queen Leora of the Zaltrax. I thank you for your bravery and for responding to my call, even if it was manipulated by those who wished to use me as a pawn. Carter nodded respectfully. Your Highness, we aim to assist those in need. Tell us how we can help you regain your freedom. Queen Leora's eyes shone with a mixture of hope and sadness. My people are being misled by a council that fears what peace can bring. Help me return and I will ensure that humanity has a steadfast ally in this part of the galaxy. Then we will help you, Carter declared, turning to his team. Let's prepare for a departure. We have a queen to return to her throne. As they escorted Queen Leora back to the ship, Carter felt the weight of their new responsibility. This mission was no longer just a rescue. It was a step toward galactic peace.
Captain Carter led Queen Leora and his team back to the starward bound, their pace brisk and purposeful through the dimly lit corridors of the asteroid. The ship was in sight, docked at a makeshift port carved into the rock. Commander Davis stayed alert, scanning the area while communicating with the ship. Bridge, this is Davis. We're returning with the Queen. Make sure the medbay is ready and security is on high alert, he instructed, his voice echoing slightly through his communicator. Carter glanced at Queen Leora, noting the determined yet serene expression on her face. Once we're aboard, we'll need to plan our next steps carefully. Your return could stir significant unrest. Leora nodded. I am aware of the risks, Captain. My council will not welcome my return lightly. They fear the changes I advocate. As they boarded the ship, the crew greeted them with a mixture of awe and respect. Leora was immediately escorted to the medical bay for a quick checkup, while Carter convened an urgent meeting in the conference room. Here's the situation, Carter began, addressing his senior officers. Our mission has evolved. We're not just dealing with a rescue operation anymore. This is about aiding in the reinstatement of a rightful leader and potentially fostering an interstellar alliance. Davis looked thoughtful. It's a delicate situation. We have the Queen here, but getting her back on the throne without triggering a civil war is going to be tricky. Carter nodded. Exactly. We need a strategy that minimizes conflict. Stealth and diplomacy will be our tools. Zhao, I want you to work on establishing communication with any Zaltraxian factions that might be sympathetic to the Queen. Lieutenant Zhao acknowledged with a nod. I'll start by reaching out to our contacts in the sector. Some of them might have insights or direct lines to her supporters. Meanwhile, in the medbay, Queen Leora spoke with the ship's doctor, her voice calm but firm. I must be at my best when we arrive. My people must see me strong and ready to lead. Back in the conference room, Carter continued. We also need to prepare for potential pushback. Miles, coordinate with the engineering team. I want the ship battle-ready in case we encounter resistance. Ensign Miles responded immediately, her demeanor serious. Understood, Captain. I'll make sure all systems are optimized. We won't be caught off guard. Carter stood, his gaze sweeping over his team. This mission could change the balance of power in this region of space. Let's make sure it changes for the better. We're not just fighting for Queen Leora's throne. We're potentially setting a precedent for human and alien relations going forward. The team nodded, each member aware of the gravity of their task. They dispersed to their respective duties, motivated by the captain's words and the importance of their mission. As preparations went underway, Carter took a moment to visit Queen Leora in the medbay. Your Highness, my crew and I are committed to your cause. We'll do everything in our power to get you back home safely. Leora smiled, her gratitude evident. Thank you, Captain Carter. I am in your debt. Together, we shall pave the way for a future where our peoples can coexist in peace. The stage was set for a diplomatic maneuver of unprecedented scale, and the starward bound was at the heart of it, speeding towards Zaltrax with the hopes of many riding on their success. With Queen Leora's health confirmed and the starward bound fully prepped, Captain Carter's team approached the Zaltrax system with a mixture of anticipation and anxiety. The bridge was silent, save for the occasional beep of the console and the soft hum of the engines. Entering Zaltrax airspace, announced Ensign Miles, her voice steady but tense. All systems appear normal, but I'm detecting several spacecraft in orbit around the planet. Looks like a welcoming committee, but not the friendly kind. Carter stood beside her, surveying the data on the screen. Any identification on those ships? Scans suggest their military, likely aligned with the Zaltraxian Council that ousted Queen Leora, Zhao reported from her station. Carter nodded grimly. Open a channel. Let's see if we can't talk our way through this. Zhao adjusted her controls, and soon the screen flickered to life, showing a stern-faced Zaltraxian official. Unidentified vessel, you are in restricted space. State your purpose. Carter stepped forward. This is Captain James Carter of the Starward Bound. We're here on a peaceful mission, returning Queen Leora to her rightful place. We request safe passage and a forum to discuss her reinstatement. The official's eyes narrowed. Queen Leora's rule is no longer recognized here. Depart immediately, or we will take action. Carter exchanged a glance with Davis, then responded firmly. We will not leave until we've spoken directly with the Planetary Council. We believe a peaceful resolution is possible and beneficial for all. The communication ended abruptly, signaling the Council's refusal to negotiate. Carter turned to his crew. Prepare for a possible engagement, but keep our weapons on defensive. We're not here to start a war. As the Starward Bound moved closer to the planet, 
several of the military ships broke formation, approaching with clear intent. Carter issued the command to deploy countermeasures, not wanting to escalate the conflict but ready to defend if necessary. Simultaneously, Zhao worked her communications array tirelessly, sending repeated messages to the planet's surface, hoping to reach any of Leora's remaining allies. Suddenly, a new signal cut through the tension. This is General Arlix of the Zaltraxian Defense. Queen Leora, is that really you on board? Leora stepped up beside Carter, responding personally. Yes, General Arlix, it is I. I seek to return and bring peace to our people. There was a pause, then a softer tone came through. My queen, I and others have awaited your return. We are prepared to assist you. Carter smiled, relief momentarily easing the tension. General, we could use some help navigating the blockade. Stand by, starward bound, the general responded. The military ships, moments ago bristling with hostility, began to withdraw, creating a pathway toward the planet. With a clear route now available, Carter gave the order to proceed. The ship descended into the atmosphere, heading towards the capital city where the council awaited, their stance uncertain. As they landed, Queen Leora prepared to disembark, her expression composed yet commanding. Captain Carter, whatever happens next, your actions today will not be forgotten. Let us hope my council sees reason. Carter nodded, offering a supportive smile. We've come this far, your highness. We'll see it through to the end. Together, they stepped out into the Zaltraxian sunlight, greeted by a mixture of military personnel and civilians, some curious, some hopeful, all watching to see the outcome of this daring rescue. As Captain Carter and Queen Leora, flanked by a contingent of her loyalists led by General Arlix, made their way toward the Grand Council Chambers of Zaltrax, the atmosphere was thick with tension. The streets of the capital were lined with citizens and soldiers, their expressions a mix of apprehension and hope. Inside the chambers, a large, ornate room filled with members of the Zaltraxian Council awaited them. The council members, regal yet stern, watched silently as Leora approached the central platform. Leora's voice was strong and clear as she addressed the assembly. Esteemed members of the council, I have returned to claim my position and to advocate for peace and prosperity for our people, with the support of our human allies. Before the council could respond, a disturbance at the back of the room drew everyone's attention. Commander Davis, who had been overseeing the security detail, marched forward, a figure in custody beside him. It was Lieutenant Zhao, her expression defiant. Carter turned sharply, his confusion evident. Commander, what's the meaning of this? Davis looked grim. Captain, I caught Lieutenant Zhao sending encrypted transmissions to a known arms dealer affiliated with the opposition. She's been undermining our mission. The council erupted in murmurs, and Carter faced Zhao, his disappointment palpable. Lieutenant, why? Zhao met his gaze, unflinching. I did what I thought was necessary for humanity. The council offered technology and weapons in exchange for ensuring the queen wouldn't return to power. I thought... You thought to betray your crew, your captain, and an ally? Carter interjected sharply. You've endangered not just this mission, but the potential for peace. Queen Leora stepped forward, her demeanor calm but commanding. Let this not disrupt our proceedings further. We have greater issues to address than the actions of one misguided individual. The council, now even more divided, whispered amongst themselves. After a tense pause, the head counselor, a dignified elder named Tyron, rose to speak. Queen Leora, the actions of your human companion cast a shadow over your intentions. How can we trust your judgment? Leora responded with unwavering confidence. Judge me by my actions and the loyalty of those who still stand with me. We seek unity, not conflict fueled by deception. The debate that followed was intense, with council members voicing both support and opposition. As the discussions raged, Carter pulled Davis aside. Keep a close watch. The betrayal has shaken everyone. We can't afford another surprise. Meanwhile, General Arlix and his faction worked to sway the undecided counselors, emphasizing the strategic advantages of an alliance with humanity and the stability it could bring. After hours of debate, the council reached a decision. Tyron announced, We will restore Queen Leora to her throne, but under strict advisories. We will also pursue an alliance with humanity contingent on further negotiations. Relief washed over Carter as he exchanged a look with Leora, who managed a small, grateful smile. Thank you, Captain. Your faith in our cause has changed the tide. As the assembly dispersed,
Davis approached Carter, his expression concerned. We'll need to keep our guard up, sir. There may be others who share Zhao's sentiments. Carter nodded, his resolve firm. We will. Let's get back to the Starward Bound and secure everything. Our mission isn't over until we're safely out of Zaltraxian space. With a mix of triumph and wariness, the team escorted Queen Leora out of the council chambers, ready to face any further challenges in their quest for peace. Back aboard the Starward Bound, Captain Carter convened a debriefing in the main conference room. The mood was somber, yet determined, reflecting the complexity of their mission's recent developments. All right, everyone, Carter began, his gaze sweeping across the faces of his loyal crew. We've navigated through betrayal and secured a provisional agreement with the Zaltraxian Council, but our work isn't done. We need to ensure that Queen Leora's reinstatement is smooth and uncontested. Commander Davis chimed in, his tone serious. We should anticipate pushback from those who oppose her. The opposition isn't going to disappear overnight. Carter nodded, turning his attention to the tactical display. Our priority is to stabilize the situation here before we leave. General Arlix and his forces are on our side but will stay in orbit as a show of support and readiness. Meanwhile, Queen Leora was organizing her own strategies with her loyalists, communicating her plans for reform and how best to integrate them with the Council's conditions. Her aim was to foster unity and demonstrate the benefits of the alliance with humanity. Lieutenant Miles suggested, We should keep an open channel with General Arlix for rapid response. If any hostilities arise, we can deploy support immediately. Agreed, Carter replied. Also, let's continue to monitor all communications in and out of the Council. We need to stay one step ahead. In the following days, the crew of the Starward Bound worked tirelessly. They maintained a vigilant watch over the planet, ready to intervene if the situation escalated. Zhao's replacement, Ensign Cole, proved adept at intercepting and decoding transmissions, ensuring the crew was well informed of all developments. On the planet's surface, Queen Leora faced her challenges with grace and resolve. She addressed her people, speaking of unity, progress, and the promising future of collaboration with humans. Her speeches were broadcast across Zaltrax, reaching every city and outpost, helping to sway public opinion in her favor. Carter watched one of her addresses via a live feed, feeling a mix of pride and concern. She's remarkable, he murmured to Davis, who nodded in agreement. She has a vision, and it's one worth protecting, Davis replied. As Leora's influence grew stronger, small pockets of resistance began to surface, but they were quickly managed by her loyalists and General Arlix's forces, with strategic advice from the Starward Bound's crew. Eventually, a grand summit was organized, inviting leaders from various sectors of Zaltrax to meet with Queen Leora and her council. Carter and a select team attended, providing not just security, but a physical testament to the human commitment to peace. The summit was tense, but ultimately fruitful. Agreements were reached on trade, technology sharing, and mutual defense. Queen Leora, with Carter by her side, finalized the accords, sealing them with her signature and a hopeful speech. As we stand together, Zaltraxians and humans alike, we forge a path toward a brighter future, she declared, her voice echoing in the Grand Hall. Let this day mark the beginning of a lasting peace, one built on mutual respect and shared aspirations. The assembly erupted in applause a sound that echoed through the corridors of the Starward Bound, watched by the crew on screens. Carter felt a surge of relief and satisfaction. We did it, he said softly, allowing himself a moment to bask in their success. With the agreement signed and peace seemingly secured, Carter gave the order to prepare for departure. As the Starward Bound readied to leave Zaltraxian space, he knew they were leaving behind a changed world, one more hopeful than when they had arrived. Captain Carter stood at the observation deck of the Starward Bound, gazing at the receding silhouette of Zaltrax. The planet, once a place of political strife, now symbolized a beacon of peace and cooperation, thanks in large part to their efforts and Queen Leora's leadership. Captain, Lieutenant Miles called from the navigation console, breaking his reverie. We're clear of Zaltraxian space and on course for the next waypoint. Thank you, Lieutenant, Carter responded, his tone reflective. He took one last look at the planet, then turned and headed towards the bridge. As he walked, his thoughts were interrupted by Commander Davis. James, that was some operation. Do you think the peace will hold? Carter considered this. I believe so. Leora is strong and wise. With the support structures we've helped put in place and the alliances forming, I'd say the future looks promising. 
Upon entering the bridge, Carter was greeted with the quiet buzz of activity typical of a ship transitioning back to routine operations. He took his place at the captain's chair, feeling the weight of command and the recent day's events. Set a course for Earth, Ensign Cole, he ordered, settling in. It's time we reported back and took a well-deserved break. As the ship hummed under the steady guidance of its crew, Carter initiated a ship-wide address. Crew of the Starward Bound, this is your captain speaking. Thanks to your hard work and dedication, we've successfully completed our mission on Zaltrax. We've not only managed to restore a rightful leader, but also paved the way for a lasting peace. He paused, allowing his words to resonate throughout the vessel. We've seen firsthand what can be achieved when we stand together, humans and aliens alike, striving for a common good. I'm proud of every one of you. The ship sailed through the star-studded blackness, its course steady. Carter felt a profound sense of accomplishment. They had navigated through uncertainty and danger, not just surviving, but succeeding in their mission to foster peace. As the Starward Bound continued its journey home, Carter reflected on the broader implications of their mission. They had not only changed the course of a planet, but potentially of interstellar relations. The success on Zaltrax would serve as a testament to human courage and diplomacy. Finally, as the familiar blue of Earth began to loom ahead, signaling their return to familiar territory, Carter felt a sense of closure. He had led his crew through uncharted dangers to a successful resolution, and now they were heading home, their mission a testament to the potential for unity and peace in the galaxy. Prepare for re-entry, Carter instructed, his voice steady, imbued with the calm of a seasoned captain who had seen his share of battles and now looked forward to peace. Let's go home. 